Hey, welcome back. Today, I want to continue on from my previous video where I showed how to apply a decal on a flat surface using the shrink wrap modifier. But now, I'm going to apply a decal on a curved surface by adding it into the object's material. So here I have a cylinder, and if I go to the UV workspace, you can see my UVs. And over here in the shading tab, you can see that I have a simple material set up with a color map, roughness, and normal map. So the first thing I need to do is bring in my decal. So I'll hit Shift A and add an image texture. Then I'll click on the folder icon and select my decal. Next, I'll hit Shift A and add a mix color node. And I'll drop it right here between the color map and the principled BSDF. And I'll plug the decal into input B on the mix node. And I'll plug the alpha output into the factor input. And now you can see the decal showing up on the model. But it's sitting up here on top. And it's way too big. So I want to be able to move, scale, and if necessary, rotate my decal independent of the base material. And to do that, I need to create a copy of my UV map. So I'll come over here to the Object Data Properties and go into the UV Map section. And in here, I'm going to click this plus symbol to create a duplicate UV map. And I'll rename this to Decal UV Map. So now I can come back over here, hit Shift A, and add a UV Map node. And I'll click in this box and select my Decal UV Map. And then I'll plug it into the vector input on the decal node. And just so I can remember which UV map is controlling which nodes, I'm going to select the UV map node and then hit Shift D to duplicate it and drag it down here. Then I'll switch to the UV map. I'll delete the texture coordinate node. And I'll plug the UV map node into the vector input on the mapping node. And now I'll jump over to the UV editing workspace and scroll over to make sure I'm looking at the decal UV map, which you can also see over here in the object data properties. And I can switch back and forth between them here, or I can switch back and forth between them up here. And now I can select these UVs and I can move, scale, or rotate them around as necessary to get the decal to fit at the right size and location. And if I switch to render display, I can see what's happening over here. But the decal is really big and stretched out and it looks like there's a problem here. So I'll jump back over to the shading tab and I'll hit Shift A and add a mapping node and drop it between the decal UV map node and the decal node. And now I can change the scale to make it smaller and adjust it so it's looking more proportional. And that's looking a lot better. But you see it's tiling across the face of the cylinder, so I'll come over here to the texture node and change this from repeat to clip. And now I just have this one instance of the image. So now I can go back to the UV Editing tab and continue making adjustments in order to position the decal right where I want it. And now I'll jump back over to the Shading tab and it's looking pretty good. It's getting some dirt over the top of it and it's picking up the roughness and normal information too. But if you don't want the roughness and normal map applied to the decal, you can select the Mix node, and then hit Shift D to duplicate it, and drag and drop it between the Roughness node and the Color Ramp. Then plug the Decal Alpha output into the Factor on the Mix node. And now I can control the roughness by adjusting the color on the Mix node from white to black. And if you want the decal to be smooth, just duplicate this Mix node again and drag and drop it between the normal map and the normal map node. Then plug in the alpha and set the color to white and now the decal is smooth while the rest of the metal is rough. 
but that's not what I want. So I'm going to hit control Z to back up and get back to where I was before. Okay, so now I want to make the decal dirty. And the first thing I'm going to do is hit shift A and add a hue saturation node. And I'll plug the decal texture node into the color input here. And then I'll plug the hue saturation node into input B and the mix node. And then I'll bring the saturation down to 0.85 so it looks a little old and faded. And now to make it dirty, I'm going to add several nodes. I'll add a noise texture, a color ramp, a mapping node, and a texture coordinate node. And I'll also add another mixed color node. And now on the texture coordinate node, I'll plug the object output into the vector input on the mapping node. And I'll plug the mapping node into the vector input on the noise texture node. Then I'll plug the noise texture factor output into the factor input on the color ramp. And I'll plug the color ramp color output into the factor input on the mixed color node. And then finally, I'll plug the mixed color result into input B on this other mixed color node. And now you see my decal has disappeared. So I'll plug the hue saturation node into input B on the mixed color node. And now my decal is back. But it's looking really faded and gray. So now I need to start adjusting these settings here on the mapping node, the noise texture, and the color ramp. So I'll start with the noise texture. I'll set the scale to 2, the detail to 15, and the roughness to 0.8. And now I'll adjust the sliders on the color ramp until I see the noise start to break up a little bit. Maybe something like that for now. Next, I'm going to adjust the scale on the mapping node. I'll set X, Y, and Z to 5. And that's looking better. But if I change the Z setting to 1, you can see I start getting some streaks happening like the dirt is dripping down the decal. But that's a bit much, so I'm going to set it to 3.5, and I think that looks good. But now, I don't want it to be gray. I want to introduce some color to the dirt, so I'll hit Shift A and add an image texture. And I'll click the folder icon and select the image texture I want to use. And you can use pretty much any image you want, but I chose this rusty metal image. And I'll plug it into input A on the mix node. And now you see I'm getting this color variation happening. But I want to be able to control the color and saturation of the dirt, so I'll hit Shift A and add another hue saturation node and drop it in right here. And now I can change the color. If I set the hue up to 1, now I'm getting this toxic bluish green color. And I'll bump the saturation up to 1.5. And then if I set the hue to 0.25, I get this purple color. So that's something you can play around with, but I'll set it back to 0.5 for this reddish brown color. And now you can adjust the amount of dirt you want by playing with the color ramp sliders or change the scale of the noise texture settings. And I'm going to add a, a mapping node and plug it in here and set the X, Y, and Z values to 2. And I'll add a texture coordinate node and plug the object into vector. No, maybe generated in vector? No, that's right, I have UVs. I need to plug the UV into vector. There we go. So that's looking pretty good now, and you can try out various different image textures until you get the look you're going for. And honestly, you, you could spend hours playing around with this stuff, but I think you get the idea. So yeah, that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.